Recently, I've seen some people throwing around terms like big web and small web when talking about things like HTTP in comparison to other things like Gemini and Gopher. But one thing I've noticed is I don't think anyone's properly defined these terms because I haven't been able to find any resources on them at all. So I've decided that I'm just going to be that resource. Obviously, this is going to be how I interpret it, so if you have a different interpretation, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below. Now, to keep things clear, when I refer to internet and web, I'm going to be referring to two very different things. So when I say internet, I'm specifically referring to the underlying infrastructure that actually powers the interconnectivity. So things like ISPs, routers, switches, and the copper and fiber cables, all of these are a part of the internet. Basically the magic that makes everything work behind the scenes. And when I say web, I'm referring to the protocols that run on the internet that allow us to send meaningful data. Because without these protocols, sure, everyone could send their own sort of binary information, but no one else would be able to know how to actually interpret it. Now, the reason why I say protocols is because there's much more out there than just HTTP and HTTPS. So I mentioned earlier that there's things like Gemini and Gopher, but you might have also heard of something like FTP or LBRY also exists, and there's plenty of others out there that all have their own different use cases. And all of these make up the general web, but when referring to the big web specifically, most of the time people are going to be talking about things like HTTP and HTTPS. I would say it's probably fair to call big web and modern web synonymous terms, but I think there are ways we can actually break this down so other things actually could be a part of the big web. So I think the three main points, at least for me, are functionality over speed, design over substance, and convenience over privacy. Now this isn't to say that one side is objectively better or it has to be all or nothing because all of these are just gradients. So sometimes you might want to trade some level of speed for more functionality or maybe you want to trade some level of your privacy for something a bit more convenient. It's just that something in the big web typically leans more towards one side than the other. Now, even though HTML and JavaScript aren't actually a part of the HTTP spec, they are fundamental to the way that people actually work with HTTP, so I think it makes sense to actually bundle them together. So let's go through a bit of an example. So this example is functionality over speed. Right here we have the YouTube website. So what do I mean by this? What I mean is that when the page loads, it will load up the HTML document. This HTML document will have some text in it, but it's also going to load in some external files. So it's going to load in images stored in a separate server. It's going to load in some script files. Sometimes the script files will be stored locally on the server that serve the HTML, but sometimes they might be externally loaded JavaScript as well. It might load in external style sheets. And all of these things, while it does make it much easier to actually add new features into the service, it does also come at a performance cost. As for design over substance, I've talked about this website before, but the Apple website is such a good example of this. So when you open up this website, you see basically nothing. You see this little bar up the top here. You see that they're advertising maybe two products. You can barely see this one here. You have to scroll all the way down to actually see anything else being shown on this page. Whereas there's not really any reason it has to actually be like this because there's plenty of unused space that could be used to show all of these products at the exact same time or if you want to go for something like this then just put them on separate pages. And for convenience over privacy, go into a search engine like Google, for example, and search for fried chicken nearby. And what you'll notice is it'll show all of these chicken shops that are near you. And to do this, it has to know where you're actually located and maybe even like how far you want to drive and some other information that will compromise your level of privacy, but it is really convenient. Now granted, if you do care about things like privacy, speed, and substance, you can go and use a big web technology to go and make a website that leans more towards those sides. However, by having the option available to go and do things like track the user and have all of these externally loaded scripts, there are going to be services that go and use those. Whether that be for malicious reasons or maybe just to make things a little bit nicer for the user. Now, whilst it is possible to have a lightweight big web client, the way they become lightweight is mainly by stripping out features that otherwise would exist in other clients. So, say, 
only displaying in a text mode and not worrying about CSS. And if you need to load up images, then load them up in a desktop image viewer or maybe just not including a JavaScript engine entirely and not having to worry about parsing any of that code. The problem you end up getting here is a lot of websites really, really rely on those technologies and some websites are generated from the ground up with JavaScript and having JavaScript disabled or no JavaScript engine entirely will just cause that website to break. So typically when someone uses a big web client that actually supports all the features that people have come to expect, it's going to be something in the realm of, say, Chromium or Firefox. These are code bases that have tens or hundreds of thousands of lines of code. They require massive teams to develop and are really, really system resource heavy. And that's just what has to happen when you have so much going on on the big web, especially when traditional desktop applications like, say, the Microsoft Office suite have been completely ported into web applications to run entirely in your web browser. To be able to do this, you need a lot of JavaScript to support a lot of different features. So to do that, you need a very big JavaScript engine. But the web doesn't necessarily have to be like that because in the early days of the web, Things like HTTP weren't actually as prolific as they are now, and things like Gopher actually did have a fairly decent foothold. There are historical reasons why Gopher didn't take off outside of its feature set, but that's for a whole nother video. But recently things like Gopher and the newer protocol Gemini have actually been getting a lot of attention inside of the Linux community. But if you're not in these communities, you may not have heard of them, so a quick rundown is that these are basically very small web protocols intended to deliver basically just text documents. I don't know things like scripts or style sheets. It's just a text document and that's all you get. There is binary support as well. However, that's not really the intended use for the protocol. Now, I would say it's also fair to put things like FTP, LBRY, and any of these other protocols that have a very specific use case in the small web as well. Now, because these protocols are so simple, you could realistically build a Gemini client in maybe like two or 300 lines of code and actually have a really decent client. Now, there are ways you could build very small HTTP and HTML and JavaScript clients like this, but you're not going to be able to get all of this functionality actually working nicely in that few lines of code. You could get bits and pieces of it, but as I mentioned earlier, to actually have a proper client, it's way more lines than that. Going with my gradients from earlier, obviously the small web is going to be on the other side. So speed over functionality, substance over design, and privacy over convenience. So for example, when it comes to speed with something like Gemini, because you're mainly going to be seeing very simple text documents, these are gonna be very easy to download and a text document is pretty easy to parse. So you can have a very slow internet connection and a very low powered device and get basically the same experience as I would with my, I think it's like 50 down or something, and my editing workstation. And when it comes to things like LBRY and FTP, rather than trying to add a bunch of extra functionality and try to compete with things like HTTP, what they've done instead is focus on the one thing they're good at and then just try to improve that. Now for substance over design, in the case of something like Gemini, what you write on the text document is what gets shown to the user. There's not going to be extra style sheets to add a bunch of extra space for no reason, Obviously, you can go and do that and you can go and make a really bad looking Gemini site. But if you go and write something sensibly, there's not going to be these massive gaps for no reason. And then for the specialized protocols, while there are GUI applications that do add like a bit of extra fluff you don't really need, in a lot of cases, you can go and interact with them directly with a CLI tool and get exactly the same experience. Now, the last point is privacy. And this sort of hooks back into the speed of a functionality. Because things like, say, user tracking and GPS locations don't really make any sense for these protocols, there's no reason to actually go and include them. And because they're not included, there's no way to actually get that information. So by default, they become naturally more private. That doesn't mean you can just go and do anything on these protocols and no one will ever find you. Things like your IP address still will be sent, but it's not like your location information and things like that just get sent without you knowing about it. Basically what I'm saying is that just because you're on Gopher doesn't mean you should go and do something illegal. Now when you're looking for a small web client, I don't know of anything that's just generally a small web client. I think this is for the best because it makes more sense to just have 
all of these individual protocols using their own individual apps. So if you want, say, a Gemini client, you might want to try out something like M4 or Lagrange. If you want a Gopher client, you might want to try out something like Lynx. If you want an LBRY client, you'd want something like, say, the library desktop app. And this pretty much holds true for any of the other small web protocols. One of the things I see people asking is, can the small web ever replace the big web? And personally, I don't really think this is actually the point of these small web protocols because they're trying to achieve very different goals. So for example, things like say, news, blogs, link aggregation will work great on things like Gopher and Gemini. But when it comes to things like say, shopping applications or web applications, while they can be done in some sort of way on a small web protocol, at least with what we have right now, a lot of these use cases will be barely functional. Will some protocol come in the future that actually will address these problems? Potentially, I don't know. But with what we have now, I don't think that's going to be the case. But if you do have something that actually will work well on the small web, maybe think about doing something like buy or try hosting it and having it running on HTTPS, Gopher and Gemini so that people using any of these protocols can access the content. So let me know what your thoughts are on the big web and small web down in the comments section below. I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Monza, Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Pity, Stephen, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, them links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, sell, leave pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.